In this video, we will take a look at finding a confidence interval for a proportion. We're going to look at a specific example and complete the example by hand and also using the Minitab software. Our example. Out of a simple random sample of 1,350 drivers, 823 claim to regularly beep their horn at annoying drivers. And our question. What is the best point estimate for the proportion of drivers who beep their horn at annoying drivers? To find the point estimate, we want to know the proportion of drivers who do this. So we'll take the 823 and divide it by the total amount of 1,350. We'll call that p hat because it is the proportion from a sample. And I'll use my calculator to figure out the decimal value and it would be 0 0.61. So 0 0.61 is the best point estimate for the proportion of drivers who beep their horn at annoying drivers. Now let's look at a confidence interval. We are asked to create a 95% confidence interval to estimate the population proportion by hand. In order to do this, we first need to look at our scenario and see if it meets the conditions for finding a confidence interval. The first condition is that it needs to be a simple random sample. And that is mentioned in the question, so that condition is met. The second condition is that it needs to meet the binomial distribution. So, do we have only two possible outcomes? Yes, they either beep their horn or they do not. Do we have a proportion for P that say yes and Q that say no? We certainly do. We found the proportion for P on the previous slide. We can take 1 minus the P hat proportion to find the proportion for Q. And do we have a set number of trials? We certainly do. Our sample size, 1,350. Finally, we are asked, are there at least five successes and five failures? Certainly are. There's 823 successes, and if we take the total minus 823, certainly more than five failures. This last condition, if it is met, allows us to use the normal distribution to approximate the binomial curve. We need this last condition to be met if we're going to do the problem by hand. So now let's look at our formulas. We have a formula for finding a confidence interval. And that formula is to take the sample proportion p hat and both add and subtract the standard error. So we had found p hat. We need a formula for e. And so we look in our notes. e is equal to the z-score of alpha over 2 times the square root of p hat times q hat divided by n. So we found our p hat value on the previous slide that was 0 0.61. We can find our q hat value by taking 1 and subtracting p hat. And when we do that math, we end up with 0 0.39. We know our n value because we know our sample size. And so that is 1,350. And so the only other piece in our formula is the z alpha over 2 value. Now we know alpha because we were told to create a 95% confidence interval. So alpha is the amount of error which would be 5% or 0 0.05. If you'll remember, we had a chart where we listed all of these. And so if we look at 95% confidence level, here we have our alpha level, we have the area of alpha over 2, and we have that critical value, so 1.96. So our z alpha over 2 number is going to be 1.96. This allows us to do our calculations. So on my calculator, first thing I'm going to do is find E. 
So I'll type in 1.96 times the square root of 0 0.61 times 0 0.39 divided by 1350. And when I do that on my calculator, I get E is equal to 0 0.026. Now, in order to find my confidence interval, I'm going to take my sample proportion and add that error and subtract that error. So if I take 0.61, and I'm going to do the subtraction first to get the lower end of the confidence interval. So I do that math on my calculator, I get 0.584. And our rounding rule is to have three significant digits, so that's what I do. I have three digits there after the decimal. And then I'll also take 0.61, and I'll add that error, and that gives me 0.636. And again, that's rounded with three significant digits. So these two numbers give me my confidence interval, and I can state that answer a couple different ways. So for one way, I can say that 0 0.584 is less than P is less than 0 0.636. And we're using P here as the true population proportion. And we're using these inequality symbols to say that the true population proportion is somewhere in this range. The other way that I can give the confidence interval is an ordered pair. So I use a parenthesis. I put the lower limit first, and just a comma, and then I put the upper limit. When I state my answer as a sentence, I would say I am 95% confident that the true population proportion is between 0.584 and 0 0.636. So either of these would be the answer. And then in sentence form, we want to say we are 95% confident. So let's look at the question again. This time, let's do it using Minitab. So we have the exact same information, exact same question. This time, our difference is that we're to go to Minitab to do the calculations rather than doing them by hand. When we're using Minitab, we want to look at the conditions. We know it is a simple random sample, and we know that the conditions for the binomial distribution are satisfied. We don't have to worry about this last one because Minitab has the option to truly use the binomial instead of approximating the binomial with a normal distribution. We'll get a slightly different answer on Minitab because we are using the exact binomial so it's a slightly better answer. To do the calculations by hand with the true binomial would be mind-boggling, but a computer can do that for us and give us a better answer. So let's open Minitab. In Minitab, I'm going to go to Stat. I'm going to go to Basic Stats. And I'm going to come down here to One Proportion. Now it asks me, one or more samples, each in a column. No, I don't have the actual data. I have summarized data. So it asks me the number of events. This would be the number of drivers who actually beep their horn, the number of people who do this. So we have 823, and I type that in. Then it asks me the number of trials. So out of how many? And we had a sample of 1350. Next, I want to click on Options. You'll see the confidence level is at 95% because that is the most common one. And you'll see that the method is exact. We have here the option for the normal approximation, but since we're using technology, let's find the exact answer. So I really am not changing anything here. We've not yet learned about hypothesis, so we can let this alone for now. We'll use it later in the course. I click OK, and I click OK. And I have my answer. So there's one sample. 823 drivers do this out of 1,350. The sample proportion is calculated for us. We had rounded this number to 0 0.61 when we were doing the math. 
and then the 95% confidence interval is calculated for us. And you can see that it's very close to the answer that we got by hand, but not exactly. My lower end would be 0.583, and by hand we had calculated 0.584 and my upper end would be 0.636, which does match what we calculated by hand when we round that to three significant digits.